All right, it's 7 o'clock on Tuesday, May the 23rd, 2017. I'm going to call the Zoning Board of Adjustment into session. The purpose of our meeting tonight is to consider a request for a variance at 1208 Minglewood Lane, Clear Creek Woods subdivisions, lots 50 and 51 of Friendswood and Galveston County. I understand there's a request to allow a structure to encroach on the rear and side building lines. All right, first let me take a moment to explain the procedure for the applicant and anyone here is not familiar with our, our process. First thing we'll do tonight, we'll have a city representative will offer a history of the request and why it was denied. Uh, then the petitioner or the petitioner's representative can take the podium and speak and tell us why they want us to approve their request. Then we'll have public comments from anyone wishing to speak, either for or against the request. After the public comments are made, I will close the public input, and then only the board members will have the opportunity to speak or ask questions of any witnesses to gather information uh, as necessary and deliberate and vote on the application. You should be aware by state law, a supermajority vote is required to approve the application. That means in order for the application to be approved, you'll need four out of the five votes. Just, just a simple majority of three is not enough. If you're unhappy with our decision and you wish to appeal it, the only appeal is through the county court. In this case, it'd be the county court at Galveston County. There are very short deadlines for that, and if you feel like you want to file an appeal, uh, we'd recommend you consult with a lawyer uh, without delay. The city records and keeps rec records of our meetings, so anyone speaking before the board must be sworn in, and we'll ask you to speak from the podium so that we can hear you and that your testimony can be recorded. You can also go watch yourself on YouTube later if you want to. Those who intend to address the board, um, I will ask that you uh, be sworn in tonight. The, uh, the testimony that you give tonight is under oath, the same as if you were in a uh, court at law. So anyone that will be speaking tonight, would you please stand and raise your right hand? Okay. Do each of you uh, solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth on the matters before the board this evening? Thank you. Again, we'll ask that when it's your turn to talk that you will uh, speak from the podium and speak clearly into the microphone so that you can be recorded. All right, each of us has uh, packets that's been prepared uh, by the city. It also contains... Uh, as far as we know, everything that the applicant turned in, the photos that you want us to look at, uh, your application itself uh, is there, and certainly you can speak and enlarge on that uh, as you see fit. And uh, I understand looking at the, uh, the application here, and it looks like it is only for a variance uh, to build a, a carport uh, and other driveway and uh, patio structures on the property. All right, is there someone from the city? You're going to speak and uh, give us a history of this, please. Sure. Brian Rowan, the building official. Uh, we received a permit application for 1208 Minglewood for uh, patio cover and carport. Upon reviewing the, the layout, the site plan, the structures that were intended um, did not meet our current setback requirements per our zoning ordinance. At that point, we had uh, no alternative but to deny the, the permit application. Is that it? All right, sir, uh, anyone want to uh, speak for the petitioner here? Yes, sir. Go to the uh, podium, please. <clears throat> Hi there. Thank you for having me tonight. My name is Stephen Hunt, and uh, the property is my my property. So I reside at 1208 Minglewood. Um, I think everyone had a chance to look at this packet. I don't know. 
Um, I'd spoken with Brian about it a little while back, but at any rate, um, yeah, I'm applying for this variance because uh, I'd like to put a covering uh, over my patio structure that I was approved to, um, to build um, in a previous permit, and then also to um, install a carport over a driveway. I don't know necessarily that the driveway itself applies to this variance, just the carport and then the, the covering. Um, as Brian had said, there's a 25-foot setback from your rear property line here in Friendswood. I think that was maybe brought into place initially because some people were having issues with some views being obscured by people building things that attached to their home. Um, so anyway, uh, if you had a chance to look at all of my figures and all of my pictures and the things that I've submitted, I kind of have a, a unique shape lot here, but uh, I'd like to just to start with this first picture, number one, and we'll just go through it quickly. Um, this is just a picture of me standing on top of a chair. I'm, I'm six foot one, so I'm standing on top of a chair and then holding up a tape measure at about nine feet. That's the fence at the rear of my property, um, and it divides my, my side from uh, the adjacent lot on the rear uh, fence line. That house is a one-story house, um, and mine is a two-story house. In addition, uh, the point at which I'm standing, the elevation is about two and a half feet higher than the foundation on my home. So even though I'm holding up a tape measure at nine feet, it's really almost more like 11 or 11 and a half feet, um, you know, when looking at my house. So that's just to kind of show that hopefully it's not really uh, obscuring uh, their view too much. Um, you can see those three posts there in that uh, first figure. That would be the outer edge of where the structure hopefully will be able to be uh, installed to and angling back up to the house. Um, the, uh, the retaining wall that you see below those posts and then those, the short retaining wall near where I'm standing, that was originally approved by the city. Moving on to kind of the second uh, photo that I've got there. Um, this is me standing on the corner uh, just down from where I was previously standing, also on a chair. My left arm there, my left hand is actually uh, in contact with the fence and then my right is reaching out towards uh, the roof line. You can see there, we're about six and a half feet off of uh, the fence. That's the corner of my house. So with the 25 foot setback uh, line from my house, I can't even add a doorknob without technically infringing on the policy and the, and the, the zoning uh, laws. And so I think my house was built in 1970. And so uh, obviously at some point in time, it was able to be built. But Basically, this is kind of this weird shaped lot, and my, the location of my house is creating a hardship uh, for me um, in trying to do this. Um, again, the neighbors' homes on the other side are single story homes. Uh, moving on to the third, it's just the other side. Uh, this is from the driveway. This is me, same thing, arms outstretched, just to show you from the other side. Uh, you can kind of see over their fence that they ha uh, that it's a one story house, and how close my house really actually is to that rear fence line. Um, on to uh, the picture number four. This I had uh, taken just to really to point out uh, how close my driveway was within that five foot easement. I know that this variance is not for that, but one additional thing that this picture does show is uh, the garage side of my house. The proposed uh, carport would be uh, extending over that garage, and, and if you're moving from right to left on this picture, almost all the way over to that, that window that you see at the back of the house. That's kind of what I have proposed and, and what I've submitted. Um, I, I'm still uh, outside of the easement, the utility easement, but not, again, not with the, outside of that 25-foot uh, setback line. My house is only six, again, six and a half feet from the rear fence. Um, the fifth one is just a picture with all the elevations uh, of my property. I've got lot 50 and 51. And the rear fence line, as you can see, the bottom is our lots 53 and 54, which I've marked on there as both being single story homes. My home is a two story home uh, as well. So it kind of, it is kind of tall. So their, their view currently is the back of my home. Um, as you can see from the elevation here, in the back corner of my lot, I'm at 23 feet. Uh, which I've kind of outlined for you. And then as you approach the street side, I'm down to about 
averaging about 16 to 17 feet. So it is a kind of a, a dramatic slope from that back corner down to the front. And across the street from my house is uh, some buyout lots that the city owns uh, that uh, abut Clear Creek. So anything in the front of my yard has effectively been rendered uh, unbuildable as well because I'm getting into the area of you know, water issues, which we you know, have in the city of Friendswood in some areas, certainly in my area. So ultimately, I'm just I'm kind of requesting these var this variance uh, due to the hardship of being as close as I am to the, the creek and also the positioning of my home uh, on my lot, which is positioned well within that 25-foot setback line. Uh, the, the very final figure I have, and, I, and this was something that my wife had to throw in. Uh, we're both physicians, and she's a dermatologist. So uh, this is just a little skin cancer issue um, prevention from a, the prevention handbook. And I just would be remiss if I didn't talk about that here since uh, I have the podium. Uh, just a couple quick little things. The facts about skin cancer. One in five Americans will develop skin cancer in the course of a lifetime. Uh, one person dies of melanoma every hour. It is preventable and treatable if caught early. Uh, nearly 50% of Americans who live to age 65 will have skin cancer at least one time. And uh, your risk of developing melanoma doubles if you've had more than five sunburns. Now that's not in like a summer, that's like over your lifetime. So I know we're all Texans here, and so we've probably exceeded that. But uh, these are the facts, and the number one thing that you can do to protect your skin, as you see outlined there, is to seek the shade, which is essentially what I'm requesting, is a, a couple of shade structures, um, and of course to use uh, sunscreen judiciously. So I, I really appreciate your time today uh, in this meeting, and I, I hope that you'll see it my way on this. Thank you, Dr. Hunt. We'll probably have some more questions for you later. Absolutely. <clears throat> Is there anyone who wishes to uh, give a public comment on the application? No one. I think we saw from our packet the adjacent property owners all have been notified of, of the meeting and had an opportunity to speak if they wished. Well, then we will close the public comments section, and, uh, and the board members, do you have any uh, questions or comments? I, I have some for the city representative. Um, how tall are the plan structures, particularly the one in the, the back of the house, the patio cover? Um... I don't recall off the top of my head. It wasn't going to be anything significant. I think if you're looking at the, the posts that were put into place, that was on a previous permit application that really didn't uh, address the future structure, but it appears they're, you know, near 10 feet tall. So I would think it, again, I, it's, I believe we're going to slope down to, to a 10 foot. We'll, we'll clarify that with Dr. Hunt later. Okay. But, uh, so, um, again, once we got to the review of, of it wasn't going to conform to our setback. That's kind of where we, we hit the, the stop point on the review of it. I understand that some of this project, at least the retaining wall, had already gotten approval. Is that correct? That is what, correct. There was what a pool. exactly had already been approved? So there was a, a pool that was being constructed, and then part of that was a, a patio, not covered, just a, a regular patio. And that's where the retaining wall and the, the pool were in, under that permit. And then so we had to do, I believe we did an amendment to include these, these posts at that time. Okay, so even the posts that are there uh, have been approved and permitted? That is correct. Okay. <clears throat> I know you probably weren't around in 70 like some of us were, but <laughs> it, it looks like this entire house was non-conforming when it was built. Is that correct? It, uh, it is a very difficult lot. I, and normally what we try to um, offer up alternatives when uh, we do have this situation where a permit application has been submitted and, and it doesn't conform to our, our setback requirements. And this one, it was just very difficult. There was, was not very many op opportunities to provide for any sort of guidance. Anyone else have questions for the city representative?
that's what my my um, at the time, like I said, we did an uh, amendment to the original with that retaining wall to include those posts for uh, some future development. Um, it wasn't, I don't think it was real um, clarified at the time. That was, uh, I guess, a year ago, I think, is when we started that project. Um, but in the course of when he was doing the construction, it was, it was more cost effective for him to do it at that time. So they were in quote incorporated on a previous permit. Anyone else? It's two, two separate structures that we're looking at. One, and I think we should probably vote on those separately when we get to it, but one of them is a patio cover in the back and then the other one's a carport on the side. Dr. Hunt, I know I have some questions for you, if you don't mind stepping back up to the podium. Thank you. Uh, I am, uh, I have some questions about how this impact your neighbors and what their visibility would be. Uh, you're showing your pictures on the patio cover there. It looks like a, uh, probably some kind of solid fence with some kind of uh, ivy or something grown all over it. Um, how much taller is the planned roof of the patio cover than that fence, if any? Yes, sir. So uh, those are um, eight by eights, and they're and they're ten feet tall. Uh, they sit on the uh, level of the patio foundation. So what you're looking at when you're seeing the foundation is also a course of brick on top of that foundation. Um, and again, if you look at uh, the elevation change, right, we're two and a half to three feet higher at the base of the fence, sloping down towards the house to the level of the foundation. So, so I think I think the level of the post uh, in relationship to the top of that fence, maybe six to 12 inches maximum. and um, Pretty close to level with the top of the pretty fence. Pretty close to level. Okay. And, and it may even end up, uh, in order to achieve the right pitch, that we cut off the tops of those posts a little bit as well. So it may end up being shorter than that. And then the roof is just a single bank. I don't know what it's formally called, but a single bankment roof just that starts at the level of the posts and just slopes up to the house underneath the windows. So, um, and do you know what the degree or, or the, it's the there amount of the, the slope is? I don't have the plans, but the, the city has them. And you guys have received uh, plans on that. Um, I just didn't get uh, a copy back. Okay. That's... That is basically what it looked like to me, but it's hard to tell perspective yes, from yes. this picture. And then uh, as far as the carport, you've got picture number two where you're standing there, and then picture number three. Is number three the exact opposite direction from where you're standing? Is that the same corner of the house that we're looking at? Yes, sir. I'm, I'll, I'm just, okay. I've just spun around. Right. Uh, 180 and, degrees. And picture number four, is that the same as picture number three, just backed up further? Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. And where that uh, suburban is kind of sitting, uh, that's about kind of to the front of it. Maybe not quite to where the front of the suburban is sitting is where the carport is anticipated to extend out to. And then it looks like the part that's adjacent to lot 54 on your exhibit five um, lot 54 is the is the tall fence with the vegetation on it. is that correct yes sir does that fence go all the way across that lot to where uh, 53 starts or close it go, to yes it? it goes all the way across to that corner that where it's six and a half feet from where i'm standing it runs the entire lot of 54 um, and then Right at the corner of that uh, of that lot, lot 53, where 53 meets 54, uh, the fence is shorter there. But um, I've got there are some trees that are. You're, you're anticipating my question exactly. It looks like yes, sir. Lot 54's view is largely blocked of this area because of the tall fence. Absolutely, and they also have a single-story home. Okay, but lot 53 
has a shorter fence, and, and I can't tell how far this vegetation extends, but do these trees go all the way to the corner of that lot or close to it? Close to it. Um, there's a small opening where they get to look at the corner of our house. Okay. Um, that, not, not that this matters at, at all. Um, everyone's entitled to a great view, but that is a rental house. Um, I don't know the owners personally, so I didn't have a chance to speak with them you know, prior to the meeting. But All right. And how tall, roughly, is the carport plan to be? Um, well, we have a, uh, uh, as you can see from the photos in, uh, four is probably the best one to look at. So the lower line of, I guess, the, the ceiling of what you'd call the carport would be kind of at the level of this, where the siding meets the brick. And the pitch will be, um, it, it will reside underneath the, the existing pitch. So it won't be as tall as my current uh, garage is that I have there. Anyone else? Brian did a good job of explaining to you why the, the posts are there already. Um, well, you know, they kind of had to go up before that base cabinet was built in anticipation of the structure, the roof structure. and. You know, if for some reason we're not granted the variance, you know, uh, we'll, we'll probably just put some sort of a trellis over the top of it or something to make it so it doesn't look super weird. Okay. So. And my main concern was if you were going up higher than what had already been granted. So, yes. Okay. Yeah. Anybody need a few minutes to look over it? Or are we ready to, to talk? much <laughs> you know one thing that strikes me we've been told before in our instructions and stuff that one of the main reasons for granting variances or special exceptions is odd shaped lots uh, I think this may be the most classic case of an odd shaped lot we've ever had uh, with this long triangle coming out the end and then when you overlay on top of that uh, you're very near the floodplain uh, there literally is, like you said, you can't add a doorknob to this place without, <laughs> yeah. without encroaching somewhere. Um, I, I think this is a, a variance that I would be comfortable with approving. I don't think it affects any of the neighbors except for maybe one narrow opening where the neighbor's already looking at the corner of your house, and now we'll just see a bit of the carport uh, along with it, the neighbor that's most impacted uh, is behind you, and it looks like they're either not going to see it at all or they're just going to see just a bit of the of the top of the roof. So um, I believe you meet the requirement of having an, an unusually uh, shaped lot. Uh, I don't believe it's going to cause a... Uh, hardship on any neighbors or anyone else and, and uh, substantially will uh, improve your your property without harming anyone else. Does anyone else have a comment they'd like to make? In other subdivisions we have uh, looked at the pre-existing Can you hear his mic? subdivisions when you looked at the uh, pre-existing uh, setbacks and I think this one uh, he is meeting the pre-existing that was there when the homes were built I would be in favor of granting his variance All right. does anyone else uh, care to comment are we ready to uh, have a motion and vote just as a reminder the prerequisites that we need 
uh, before voting for this would be that the grant of the variance would not be contrary to the public interest, that there are special conditions peculiar to the property, that the literal enforcement of the ordinance might result in unnecessary hardship, the grant of the variance would be consistent with the spirit of the ordinance, and the grant of the variance would ensure that sub substantial justice be done. I uh, hear a motion that all of the prerequisites are met and uh, a motion to uh, grant the variance. I'll so move. Have a second? I'll second. All right. uh, I think we need to vote separately because there are two separate structures. So first I'll uh, ask the vote on the uh, patio on the uh, back of the house. Uh, all in favor of the variance, please raise your right hand and say aye. Aye. That's four to one, so that passes. Uh, now, as regard to the carport on the side of the house, uh, I'll ask the same question. Uh, do we find that the, uh, all the prerequisites are met and that uh, the variance should be granted? All in favor, say aye, and raise your right hand. And that's unanimous, so they both pass. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. All right, we have just a little bit of business to attend to. Uh, if anyone's here that uh, wants to leave, you will, uh, you will not hurt our feelings. You can leave or you'll just be here a few more minutes and we'll be done. All right, the next agenda item. I can find my agenda, I believe is approval of the minutes from, there we go, approval of the minutes from the February 28th, 2017 regular meeting. Is there any comments or objections regarding the February 28th minutes? Hear a motion to approve? We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. February 28th minutes are approved. And do we have any comments from the board members on anything they wish to discuss? Hearing none, I guess we don't have any. Uh, Jim, Hill, Jim Hill's Hill, Hill is here as our Council liaison, uh, Mr. Hill, did you have anything you wanted to report or ask about? Uh, I just wanted to thank you all for your service uh, and remind everybody that we have our annual Memorial Day service Monday at 10 o'clock. It's, it's well worth the time to come up Monday morning. Is that next door at the yeah, Memorial there? At the Veterans Memorial. All right, thank you. Thank you, guys. And I think we have our ZBOA, or not, our zoning our zoning board liaison here, correct? And for the third time, I'm going to have to ask your name because my memory for names is terrible. Good evening, uh, Tony Annan. And uh, I think the last time I was here, you were asking about the status of a, a subcommittee review of fencing ordinances. No, I really don't have much news other than that. Uh, we're still reviewing that. We got direction from city council to perhaps relax the rules a little bit, but we're still in the review stage and we should have something is that specifically for the front yard fence that is correct okay thank you that's all i got all right having no further business on our uh i'll ask for a motion to adjourn so moved. a second all in favor say aye 